Martin Duberman, Stonewall, The Definitive Story of the LGBTQ Rights Uprising That Changed America. Take a compelling journey through the history of the LGBTQ rights uprising in the United States with Stonewall, The Definitive Story of the LGBTQ Rights Uprising That Changed America by Martin Duberman. The book a collection of diverse and powerful stories. From Craig's sexual exploration in a home for troubled boys to Yvonne's defiant proclamation of her lesbian identity, at the dinner table. Beyond these intensely personal narratives, Duberman delves into the larger cultural and political landscape of the time, highlighting the significance of World War II, the emergence of the homophile movement, and the key role lesbian and gay bars played in fostering a sense of community. Finally, witness the iconic Stonewall riots and the birth of the Gay Liberation Front marking a turning point in the fight for LGBTQ rights. Childhood Trauma Shapes Sexual Identity Craig, Yvonne, Carla, Jim, Ray, and Foster share their childhood experiences that molded their sexual identities. Craig's time in a home for troubled boys introduced him to erotic friendships between males, while Yvonne's strong black mother influenced her refusal to be baptized and announcement of her homosexuality. Carla's unconventional aunt inspired her rejection of traditional gender roles. Jim's stint in politics prompted him to trade sexual favors for hitchhiking rides. Ray's grandmother's neighbors teased him for his effeminacy, and a teacher performed sex acts with him. Lastly, Foster's internalized self-doubt and confusion about sex led to his celibacy and eventual zealous contribution to organizing the gay movement. Diverse Lives of Gay People in Early 1960s New York Yvonne, Craig, Carla, Foster, Jim, and Ray lead different lives exploring their sexuality as gay people in early 1960s New York. In early 1960s New York, Yvonne embraced the jazz scene and underground lesbian bars in Harlem as a retreat from the racist village gay scene. Despite strict roles enforced in lesbian bar culture, she was comfortable with her butch preferences. Craig, on the other hand, found adventure in the gay cruising scene in Chicago. A chance encounter led him to a magazine, The Mattachine Review, which introduced Craig to the idea of gay people organizing and promoting their rights. He eventually left for New York, the epicenter of gay America. Carla's education at an all-girls school made her realize her sexuality. Books about lesbians left her demoralized with the potential negative consequences of her lifestyle. Foster graduated from Columbia in 1949 and struggled with insecurities. Instead of getting therapy, he chose to work for his father's prefab housing business in Florida. He eventually worked for a non-profit, awaiting a worthwhile cause for his remarkable talent and dedication. Jim was committed to becoming an actor in the avant-garde theater after his aborted attempt to become a priest. He cruised for hookups in all-night coffee shops or public baths, subway station men's rooms, and the YMCA since there were only a few gay bars in the village in the early 1960s. Gay hustling has been in Times Square since the 1940s. Ray started hustling there at 11 years old and loved it. He made enough money to live with another street hustler he had fallen in love with and made fast friends who became his family. Marcia officiated Sylvia's, formerly Ray, renaming ceremony in someone's uptown apartment. Marcia taught Sylvia to stand up for herself and not to care about what others think. These six people led diverse lives, but as gay individuals living in early 1960s New York, they shared a common struggle. They sought acceptance and a safe space, which sparked the gradual emergence of a gay hip scene. The message that it was okay to be gay filtered out to the broader New York hipster scene, paving the way for the gay rights movement. Gay Liberation Movement Oppressed by society, gay men and lesbians developed their language of resistance, religion, and music to express their experiences. This collective consciousness gained momentum during World War II, and after the war, subcultural enclaves led to the proliferation of bars, which became critical social institutions for the gay community. The Mattachine Society, a left-wing organization, was formed in Los Angeles in 1950, leading to increased advocacy for political and legal rights. 
However, the organization lost its radical voice, promoting respectability instead of revolution. Despite this, the gay village scene in New York City was thriving in the early 1960s, offering a place for young, black, and gay individuals to be themselves, party, and organize against the war in Vietnam. While facing society's homophobia, these individuals embraced their truth and found explosive possibility in their experiences. The Rise of LGBTQ Activism The article published by the New York Times in 1963 marked the beginning of the end of public silence on homosexuality. While the homophile movement made small strides compared to the civil rights marches, organizations like Mattachine represented a general assault on traditional values and offered hope for the LGBTQ community. Craig, a member of Mattachine, believed visibility was the key to ending oppression and tried to draw younger and more militant people into the movement. Carla was radicalized by the 1968 protests at Columbia and Sylvia experimented with hormone treatments before deciding to embrace her natural femininity. Meanwhile, Jim hung out at Max's Kansas City nightclub and used it as an opportunity to distribute his new left publication. These individuals, along with countless others, were instrumental in the rise of LGBTQ activism. Craig's Activism Journey Craig's activism journey began with the founding of Nacho, the first national gay rights organization in the U.S. However, the assimilationist civil rights goals of Nacho seemed out of touch with the radical politics of the 1960s. Despite the success of his gay literature bookstore, Craig was constantly threatened and harassed. He was fed up with the gay bar scene that was controlled by homophobic mafia men. Craig's activism journey led him to the Stonewall Inn, a place that embodied everything that was wrong with the bar scene but also served as an oasis for gay men in New York. Craig's activism journey culminated in the Stonewall Riots, which marked the beginning of the modern LGBTQ plus rights movement. The Stonewall Uprising It was June 27, 1969, when the lives of members of the LGBTQ plus community in New York City were forever changed. The Stonewall Inn was a popular gay bar in Greenwich Village and was raided by police officers in an attempt to crack down on homosexual activity. However, instead of fleeing, the patrons and supporters of the establishment fought back, leading to several days of protests that marked the beginning of the gay rights movement in America. On that fateful evening, Sylvia and several patrons were inside the Stonewall Inn when the police officers arrived and demanded ID checks. The tension in the air grew as people sensed that something different was going to happen this time. A man was arrested for not having an ID and a person talking back to a cop also faced consequences. As the police tried to take the prisoners away, the crowd became increasingly hostile and jeered at the officers. In a moment of defiance, a queen started swinging at a cop who had shoved her. People broke free and managed to unlock their friends from the paddy wagon, all the while chanting, pigs, and gay power. The police were outnumbered and retreated as a trained riot control unit arrived to clear the streets. The Stonewall Uprising continued for several days, and during that time, the LGBTQ plus community made their voices heard. They demanded equal rights and an end to the discrimination they had long faced. The Stonewall Uprising was a turning point in the struggle for LGBTQ plus rights and paved the way for future progress in the United States. Stonewall, a turning point. In the summer of 1969, the Stonewall Inn in New York's Greenwich Village was raided by police. The following nights saw a series of riots on the streets by gay rights activists calling for change. Despite opposition from some in their own community, these young activists formed the Gay Liberation Front and pushed for recognition and respect. The Stonewall Riots became a powerful symbol in the fight for LGBTQ plus rights, and were commemorated the following year in New York's first Pride March. In Stonewall, the definitive story of the LGBTQ rights uprising that changed America, Martin Duberman brings to life the unforgettable stories of individuals who defied societal norms to stand up for their identity and rights. 
Throughout the book, we see the progression of the homophile movement, the significance of gay and lesbian bars, and the volatile social and political atmosphere culminating in the legendary Stonewall riots. From Yvonne's living her truth as a proud lesbian to Craig's tireless advocacy for visibility and inclusivity, in the LGBTQ community, these courageous stories are woven together to form the tapestry of a movement that, against all odds, would change America forever. The book serves as a powerful reminder of the resilience, passion, and determination that fueled the fight for LGBTQ rights.